Hello everyone. So now we are going to discuss how to teach an ECG to a medical student or a nursing student based on the uh, teaching station approach that I previously discussed. So first of all, you are going to introduce yourself. And as you are here, you are talking to a colleague um, who's either a junior doctor or a medical student. So it's better to introduce yourself by your first name and without aiding the doctor uh, prefix. And then we uh, ask a few questions from the student just to build a rapport. So we ask, how, how are you doing? How is the rotation going? How are the studies? Are you learning new things? Are you enjoying your rotation? A few questions just to build the repo. Okay, and the next step will be asking, uh, you know, checking the previous knowledge. So we'll ask the student, what do you already know about ECG? Okay, and we'll check the previous understanding. Then we will check the learning objectives. We will ask them um, if there's anything in specific that they want to learn about ECG, okay? And after this, we will, you know, uh, set our teaching objectives. So we will tell the student that um, ECG is quite a vast topic. So if we are not able to cover everything today, then uh, we can arrange further sessions as well, um, if you like. And I will also give you some links and some references for free uh, YouTube tutorials or some books, etc. Okay. So first of all, let's discuss the definition of ECG. So ECG is basically the recording of electrical activity of the heart on a piece of paper by an ECG machine, okay? Then we will ask the student, uh, do you know how ECG is recorded? Now, asking these questions from students is really important to keep the student involved and to keep our session interactive, okay? So we'll ask the student, do you know anything about how ECG is recorded? If the students say yes, um, then you say excellent. If the students say no, then you will uh, then you will still encourage the student. We'll tell them no worries. I'm here to teach you. Uh, so basically, ECG is a twelve lead ECG machine. Uh, so basically, there is a twelve lead ECG machine, and um, there are uh, but physically there are ten leads. Six leads are um placed on the patient's chest, and four leads are connected to the patient limbs, and then the ECG is recorded. Okay, and then um. On the ECG strip, you will uh, show them the leads. You will tell them that lead V1 to V6 are called chest leads. And uh, the lead 1, uh, lead 2, lead 3, AVR, AVL, and AVF are limb leads, OK? So uh, after this, uh, we will uh, we'll tell the student that the first thing that we should do while we are reading an ECG is to confirm the patient details and the date, OK? so. Um, I will tell the student that now let's talk about how to read an ECG. So when we are reading an ECG, the first thing to do is to confirm the patient details and the date so that we are sure that we are reading the correct uh, person's ECG and, uh, you know, uh, it's the most recent ECG for them. All right. Then we'll ask the student if they are aware about the, uh, they know anything about the conduction system of the heart, okay, and if they don't know, then we will take a piece of paper and we'll explain it to them. So we'll tell them that basically the heart has uh, four chambers, the upper two are atria and the lower two are ventricles, okay? And in the atria, in the right atrium, there is a point which is called SA node. So electrical activity of the heart starts in the SA node and then it spreads down to the atria, okay? So it spreads down to the two, to, to the two um, atriums, okay? And the atria are said to be depolarized when the electrical activity spreads to them and this produces this p wave on the ecg okay then the electrical signals travel to a point at the junction of the atria and the ventricles and this point is called av node there is a little pause here and this pause is represented by this pr interval which is this straight line okay after this this uh, signal spreads downward through the conduction system of the ventricle, which is called bundle of phase, and Purkinje fibers, and it spreads throughout the ventricle, and the ventricle is depolarized. And this is shown by the QRS complex on the ECG. Okay, and then the ventricle contracts and push the blood out of the heart. And once the uh, and once the um, ventricles have contracted and the blood has been pushed out of the heart, then the ventricle relaxes, and this produces this uh, T wave which is called, which is said to be due to ventricular depolarization. So if we get this P, Q, R, S, T, and these are repeated throughout the ECG again and again. So this is the basic unit for an ECG. All right. 
Okay. Uh, now we'll ask the student if they know anything about how to calculate the heart rate from ECG. And then we will, if they don't, don't know, then we will tell them that uh, on ECG, there are these uh, big squares and inside the big squares are small squares. So how do we calculate the heart rate? Uh, the heart, uh, heart rate? We count the number of big squares between two R valves on the ECG. So this is an R valve and this is an R valve. And we'll calculate the uh, number of um, uh, big squares in between two R valves. And then what we will do, we will uh, divide 300 by the number of big squares between the two R valves. So for example, uh, we have five uh, big squares between the two R valves. So we will divide 300 by uh, five and we get 60. Okay, so we get the heart rate of uh, 60 beats per minute and this is for when the heart rhythm is regular and uh, when the heart rhythm is irregular there is an another method that we will discuss some other time. Okay, then we will go to the heart rhythm. We will ask the student whether they know um, how to tell whether the heart rhythm is regular or irregular. So. What do we do? Uh, so on every ECG, every P valve should be followed by a QRS complex and the QRS complex should be followed by T valves as you already discussed as well. So there is P valve which is followed by QRS complex which is followed by T valve and this pattern is repeated again and again and again. Uh, and um, this is basically the characteristic of a regular heart rhythm. But if this is not the case, then the heart rhythm is abnormal and we need to inform our seniors, okay? Also, the number of big squares between the two R valves need to be the same, all right? But uh, throughout the ECG, so if the uh, number of big squares between the first two R valves is three, then the, next, the same number of big squares should be there between the next two R valves and the next and the next. And this, uh, you know, this pattern should be uniform throughout the ECG as well. But if there is difference in the number of big squares between two R waves uh, in the ECG, so in the between the first two R waves there are two big squares and then three, and then sometimes there are five, then it means that the heart rhythm is irregular, and we need to inform our seniors. Okay. All right. Uh, then ST segment elevation. So I tell the student that this ST segment. This is an important, you know, uh, this is an important thing in the ECG. We compare this ST segment with this preceding PR interval and they should be on the same line in the ECG. But if this ST segment is elevated above the PR line, then it can indicate that the heart is receiving less blood supply. So it can mean that the patient is having ischemia of his heart, okay? So um we compare this st segment with the pr interval uh, the pr inter uh, interval or the pr segment so if the st segment is about the pr uh, the pr segment by two small squares in the limb lead and one small square in the chest lead then it means that um the patient is um having a heart attack and we need to inform our seniors Right, and they will, you know, um, give the patient blood thinners, and um, you know, depending upon the patient situation, they might get transferred to the cath lab to remove the blood clot. And if it's not possible, then they will give uh, clot, and they will give drugs that will, you know, uh, burst this clot. Okay, and we give blood thinning medication and other medications to protect the heart. So this was all about um, ECG teaching and I hope now it's clear that you can teach any station, any topic, any teaching topic using the same, you know, the same rules or the same guidelines. Just try to make sure that you keep the students involved and uh, no need to explain very difficult concepts to them or try to cover everything in the eight minutes. As long as you are keeping the student involved and you are considered enough for the student and you are trying to encourage them and repeat in stuff for them, then you should be fine. So I hope this was helpful and I'll see you soon with another video.